Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is a continuation of the Ezekiel series. Let's take a look at verse, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 9. Chapter 9 and verse 1. This is a very interesting chapter, if you ask me. So let's get going. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. In modern English, a writer's ink horn would be a, you know, a pen, a pen, you know, like a fountain. Well, maybe not a fountain pen, but, you know, a writing pen. I'm not exactly 100% sure, but I suspect that these men are angels, God's angels, not the fallen ones. That's what I suspect. Verse 3. And the glory of the God of Israel, and we're not talking about the she kinda. No. Don't fall for that she kinda thing. When you hear churches talking about the Shekinah, you're they're talking about the goddess, the queen of heaven. Run. That comes from Kabbalah. That doesn't come from the Bible. There's a word in the Bible when they're talking about the glory of God. There's a word that looks something similar to Shekinah, but it's not. I mean, it's, you know, just stay away. That's all I can tell you. Stay away. Because when somebody tells you that they're talking about the Shekinah, you know they got it from Kabbalah. Verse 3, And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. Which is why I think this is an angel. It says a man. But, I mean, I can show you uh, it says the two men went to Abraham, and then they went to Sodom, where Lot was, and then you find out that they were angels. You know, so sometimes angels are called men. All right, so, and he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of of the city through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Now you got two different marks in the Bible. Here you have the mark of God, and then you got the mark of the beast, which is in the book of Revelation. It's also called the seal of God. So let's take a look at that. And that would be in... Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star 
fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of a bottomless pit. Now, obviously, this star is an angel. It's just a, a figure of speech. It wasn't a Hollywood star. It wasn't Brad Pitt or Jolie, whatever her name is. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Do you know that there has been, um, there was a time in history that a volcano erupted and threw so much smoke and ash into the air. There was actually a year there was no summer. It snowed in July. They called it the year without a summer. The year of death. If you didn't have enough food stored up, guess what? A lot of people went hungry. Because nothing would grow in that summer. I guess I should look it up, huh? So people don't say, Ah, oh, Chaplain Bob, you don't know what you're talking about. It was called The Year Without a Summer. 1816 is known as the year without a summer, also known as the poverty year and 1800 and froze to death because of severe climate abnormalities that caused um, average global temperatures to decrease. So there was a volcanic eruption and that wasn't the first time that it happened. On the summer of 1816, snow fell in New England, and they had cold rains throughout all of Europe. So, yeah. Crop failures, people. Crop failures. And that wasn't the first time it happened. It happened... Uh, I forget the year, but you could look it up. You know, there was a volcano on the other side of the world. Uh, I forget what country. It was in um, Asia. And it threw so much ash into the air that it just, you know, there was no... They, they had snow in July, I heard, in Europe. It was sometime in the Middle Ages. So, you know, it's not a new thing. So, Revelation 9, verse 2. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them, that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only, uh, but only those men which have not, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. See, those that are have the Holy Spirit that belong to the Lord, they have the seal of God in their foreheads. So these locusts will not be able to touch those with the seal of God in their foreheads. Verse 5. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Boy, that's, that's going to shake some things up, huh? People are going to want to die, and they can't? And they're being tormented by these scorpion-like things? Oh, yeah. How would you like to be in the, um, 
the death room where they're getting ready to cut your head off and these scorpion things locusts fly in and start stinging everybody except for leave the christians alone boy wouldn't that be a wake-up call huh oh yeah all right um all right so you got the mark of god let's take a look at the mark of the beast Uh, 19, Revelation 19 and verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So, let's go to Mark thir uh, Revelation 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. In. You know all the new modern Bibles say on? On. But the King James says in. Verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, or the vaccination uh, card. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's I, I. I. Yeah. We don't. I don't know if it's the vaccination card, but you know it could be. You never know. Verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six hundred and sixty six. Oh, yeah. All right, so. Now, what's this guy doing with the ink horn? Well. Let's take a look. Revelation 22, 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Do you know the Bible talks about having your people's names blotted out of the book of life? Oh, yeah. If your name's written in the book of life, God can take an ink blot and blot your name out. Doesn't get erased, just gets a black spot, an ink, an ink blot. Sort of, kind of. So when you hear people say, once saved, always saved, eternal security, uh, you know you're probably listening to a Baptist. Yeah, I went to one of their Bible colleges for, yeah. Believe it or not, I got a master's degree from one of their Bible cemeteries. I mean, uh, yeah, y you know what I mean. Revelation 20, 15, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 3, 5. Listen to this carefully. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Whoa, Chaplain Bob, my my Baptist church told me, oh, we're, our names are written in the book of life when we accepted Jesus into our heart and said that 30-second sinner's prayer and nothing we can do can 
Keep us from being unwritten in the book of life. Eternal security, once saved, always saved. Uh, praise a Jesus. Uh, uh, well, I don't know. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Now, these are the words of Jesus. I, now, this is just me, but I, I would take the words of Jesus over a Baptist preacher any day of the week. Any day. Revelation 13 and verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, the beast, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Do you know that there are some people whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world? I bet you one of them's Cain. I bet you another one of them's Esau. But that's just my opinion. All right, let's go to Exodus chapter 32. Moses is up on the mountain getting the uh, Ten Commandments, the two tablets of stone. And then everybody's like, man, Moses has been gone a long time. Maybe he got lost or he's dead or whatever, you know. We don't know what's happening to this guy. So Aaron, his brother, tells everybody that, you know, take off your gold earrings and uh, bring them to me. So what does he do? He makes uh, a golden calf. And then he says, uh, verse 4, uh, and they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Uh, and then they built an altar and, uh, you know, they're playing around with this golden calf, calling it God. And let's just say that God was not pleased. And then uh, Moses intercedes for these people because God was ready to kill them all. You know? So the Lord uh, decides, okay, verse 14, And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. So, uh, let's see, verse 19. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh into the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands and brake them beneath the mount. You know what happened? God, Moses broke the Ten Commandments. All boom. Yeah. Moses broke all ten of the commandments. Boom, boom. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it, in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. Wow. And then uh, Moses confronts Aaron and Aaron's like, man, the people made me do it. The devil made me do it. Woo remember Flip Wilson? You remember Flip Wilson and uh, laughing? Yeah. Yeah. You're old. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So, verse 25, Exodus 32, 25. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Oh, boy. Well, they're getting ready to slaughter some people here, so. Uh, verse 30. Let's go to verse 31. Uh, let's go to verse 30. 
And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord. Peradventure I will make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, O oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Listen to this carefully. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, blot me, B-L-O-T, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. See, this is the book of life, even in Moses' day. Verse 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Oh, yeah. Somebody show that to uh, the Baptist churches. Whosoever hath sinned against me, will I blot out of my book. Therefore now go lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, mine angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. Oh, yeah. So when you hear people say eternal security, once saved, always saved, it don't matter what you do. You said a 30-second sinner's prayer at a at a Billy Goat Graham uh, revival, and, you know, the Lord can't throw you in hell no matter what you do. John MacArthur is of that camp. He actually did a video. I heard him say it. He said, you could take the mark of the beast knowingly as an adult. Well, I'm adding a little bit to that. He says, you go to heaven because you said a sinner's prayer. Seriously. Now, I have a I, I honestly believe that for people that are of the what they call the age of accountability. You know, if a parent has a six-year-old child get the mark of the beast, I think the child's going to get a chance to grow up. And, you know, that's a different, that's a different story. But the parent, oh boy. Let's go back to Ezekiel 9, verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark, set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So the people that are sighing and crying for the abominations that be done in the midst of Jerusalem, the one with the ink horn is going to put a mark upon their forehead. The mark of God, the seal of the Lord. Their names are written in the book of life. Verse 5. Well, here's the, uh, you know, here's the flip side. And to the others, he said in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Strike him down dead. Let not your eye spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly, old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. So where are they going to start at God's sanctuary? Well, that's where the Levites would be, the Levitical priests, God's servants, supposedly. Why there? Why start there? Well, maybe 1 Peter 4.17 gives you an idea. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Oh no, Chaplain Bob, that's not true. Uh, we're going to be raptured out of here. We're going to fly away in the pre trib rapture. Whee! Uh, I don't think so. Judgment starts at the house of God, the church. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not?
the gospel of God. And what's the gospel of God? Believing on his son, Jesus, who is the Christ. I mean, come on. Back to Ezekiel 9, verse 6. Well, let's go verse 5. Those that don't have the mark, listen to this. And to the others, he said, Mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, the mark of God, not the mark of the beast, the mark of God. And begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them. And I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? This is called intercession. Several people have done that. Moses did it. Ezekiel's doing it here. Remember, I did Jeremiah series. Jeremiah would have done it, but you know what? God said, don't pray for these people. Pray not for these people for their good. God's had a belly full. And you're going to, you know, people think, oh, well, you know, you know, we're the church of God. God loves us. We're going to fly out of here. Europe, the United Kingdom. The United States, well, of course, Canada, you know, New Zealand, Australia. You know how bad things are? Somebody in Australia asked me to get them a King James Bible. Now I thought, oh, okay, no problem. I went online and looked for a King James Bible. Do you know I couldn't buy a King James Bible in Australia to have it sent to them? I'm serious. I could not find online in Australia a King James Bible to send to somebody. A uh, book of Amos, a famine in the land, not necessarily a famine of bread, but a famine of hearing the words of God. I mean, that's how bad it is. I tried to do the same thing in the United Kingdom to send a Bible to somebody in uh, one of the Baltic states. Guess what? I couldn't do it. I had to have it sent from America. Terrible. Amazon. Forget about it. I'm sure if I wanted to order a satanic Bible by the Church of Satan, that wouldn't have been a problem. Well, I didn't try, but I'm just saying. And it came to pass while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, oh, Lord, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Verse 9. Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth. And the Lord seeth not. Yeah. The Lord doesn't care what's going on. And he doesn't see what evil we're doing. He doesn't care. He doesn't see and he doesn't care. That's basically what they're saying here. Verse 10. And as for me also, mine eyes shall not spare. Neither will I have pity. But I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. 
So he put the mark upon the foreheads of those that have this for the seal of God. The mark of God. One day we're going to have to make a choice. The mark of God or the mark of the beast. Take your pick, buddy boy. May the Lord give me strength to stand in that day. All of us. We can't do it of our own strength. Now let me tell you something, people. If it's our lot in life to be taken and to be beheaded, look up the Noahide laws. N-O-A-H-I-D-E. Look them up. Uh, we could be beheaded, every one of us, for violation of their Noahide laws that exists only in the minds of rabbis. You know, those that don't believe in Jesus, those that deny Jesus. The Bible records that when you're taken to be executed, don't think about what you're going to say because the Lord himself, his Holy Spirit, will speak through you. And that's in Matthew 24 and Mark 13. You can read it on your own. But that will be your guarantee that you're, you belong to the Lord. And when they cut your head off, maybe you'll want to close your eyes when they put your head in the guillotine. And you'll hear a sound. And when you open up your eyes, you'll be under the altar of the Lord's with everybody else that had been slain for the word of God, awaiting your resurrected body. You'll be with the Lord from that day forward. Maybe I should read that. Yeah, I'll read it. All right, let's go to Mark 13, verse 1. And as he, Jesus, went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. Hey, look at this magnificent building and the architecture. Isn't this incredible? That's the Bob commentary. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be one stone there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Uh, so when the, when the Jews tell you the wailing wall is part of the temple, you got a choice. Are you going to believe them or are you going to believe Jesus? Jesus said there wouldn't be one stone left upon another. I'm going to pick Jesus. I don't know about you, but I pick Jesus. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. Deception. Pay attention lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Think about it, people. We had World War I, World War II. And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. That's only the beginning, people. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake. For a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. Listen carefully. 
But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. And I talk about delivering you to councils and in the synagogues, to be brought before rulers and kings for a testimony against them. This, that's what the subject is. Verse 11. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Don't think about what you're going to say. Take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death. And the father, the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents. Now why is that? Well, you sent your kids to public school and they were taught, uh, you know, uh, evolution and, uh, you know, LBGT and, uh, you know, all that good stuff. Good for them. And children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. What do you mean we got to endure unto the end to be saved? What? My Baptist preacher said, once saved, always saved. And I said a sinner's prayer at the Billy, Graham Billy Goat Graham Revival. Well, argue with Jesus. Don't argue with me. People, when you're ready to get your head cut off, if it's your lot in life, don't think about what you're going to say. The Lord's going to speak through you, His Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And that will be your proof that ye belong to Him. All right, so let's say it's our lot in life to get our heads cut off. You know, you, you're put on the guillotine, you close your eyes, you hear the chunk, well, the start of it. And then you open up your eyes. Well, let's, what are you going to see? What are you going to see? What do you say? What do you say? Revelation 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Now, why is that? Personally, I believe all the children that were aborted and died in childbirth or young or a certain, you know, before a certain age will be allowed to grow up in this kingdom without Satan and uh, be allowed to, you know, uh, be tested. There's going to be a temple in God's kingdom during this thousand years. It's called Ezekiel's temple. And why is that temple there? Because Mosaic law is going to be enforced for those that uh, grew up during this time. And I'm not talking about believers. I'm talking about aborted children. That's a very, very, very deep subject. It would take me probably an hour or two to prove to you. But I've got a, a, a Bible study on uh, children in the kingdom. If anybody's interested... Send me an email or send me a comment. And oh, by the way, a lot of comments are disappearing on YouTube. A lot. And I'm not getting notifications a lot of times. Uh, you know, I'll go to a, a video and I'll see comments there, but there's no notification that they left a comment. So, and then things go to spam. Uh, I, you know, what can I do? 
the devil's playground. So, but there will be children in the kingdom. And it's not going to be from believers. Because Jesus said that uh, in, in the uh, resurrection, we would neither marry nor be given in marriage and be as the angels in heaven. But there's going to be children. It's going to be probably the aborted kids. Kids that died at a certain age in childbirth. Uh, you know, those kind of things. You know, and that's what Ezekiel's temple is going to be about. They're going to have to do Mosaic law. To animal sacrifice. Unless, of course, they come to faith in Jesus Christ and then that ends that. But then Satan's going to be bound, unbound for after the thousand years. And he's going to go deceive some of those people that uh, had a chance to uh, grow up. Revelation 22, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations to no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. Listen carefully. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. They did not worship the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished, this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Oh, yeah. And you can keep reading, but, you know. Because, yeah, we're going to cover Ezekiel's temple. And I've actually had people tell me that, uh, oh, yeah, we're going to, when we get to heaven, we're going to be having to do animal sacrifice in Ezekiel's temple in heaven. They're idiots. Well, I don't know if they're idiots, but they're deceived or deceivers. I'm not sure which. You know, Christ said it is finished. You know, if you think we're going to be doing animal blood sacrifice in the kingdom, may I suggest you read the book of Hebrews. Read the book of Hebrews. You know, the blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sin. Only the blood of Jesus. Ugh. All right, people. Well, this is uh, ay, 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 ay. the end of... Ezekiel, I think it's nine. Yeah, Ezekiel chapter nine. And by the way, uh, the idea that the souls of the people are under the altar, uh, you know, your body might die, but your soul lives on. So the idea of soul sleep, what they, you know, uh, there's people that will tell you, like the Jehovah's Witnesses will say, oh, yeah, well, when you die, you don't know anything. You're just, you know, wait until your body gets resurrected before you have any conscious existence. And no, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, read the, par uh, the story 
the story of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man was having a conversation with Abraham. You know, if Abraham was non-existent, that wouldn't happen. Jesus says, and there was a rich man. He didn't say it was a parable. It's not a parable. And Lazarus was called by name. No, not the one he raised up from the dead. The uh, brother of Martha and Mary. No, it's a different Lazarus. So, yeah, don't believe, don't believe everything you, you know, they tell you. Everything they try to do is to dishonor the Lord. So, and besides, Jesus said, uh, well, let's, let me look it up. Well, the Sadducees that didn't believe in a resurrection were trying to trick up, uh, trick Jesus, talking about a woman that had seven husbands, and uh, then they're saying, well, you know, in the resurrection, which, which husband's, you know, which is going to be your husband, because she's had all seven of them. And Jesus said, you do greatly err, not knowing the power of God. But in Matthew 22, verse 30, it says, For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. In heaven. Not all the angels are in heaven. And people will try to tell you, Genesis 6, uh, the sons of God were just godly men. No, they weren't. No, they were angels. Read Job 38. They shouted for joy before the earth even exist uh, at the foundation of the earth. Adam didn't come till six days later. Those sons of God could not be men. Impossible. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead... Have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. So I think I would believe Jesus over, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses any day. Oh, and by the way, I remember when the Jehovah's Witnesses said that the world was going to end, Jesus was coming back by the end of 1975-76. Well, guess what? Didn't happen. Of course, now they say, well, you know, Jesus is ruling and reigning invisibly. Boy, I'll tell you what, there sure is a lot of evil in this world for Jesus to be ruling and reigning. So, yeah. All right, this is the end. Chaplain Bob Walker um, of commentary on Ezekiel number nine. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.